comes alive. Close and quiet. Welcome back, viewers, to Heat 3 of the club championship here at the mighty Manly 16-foot skiff club in their 100th year. Um, it's not much breeze, so we've got a light little east, nor'east, back to the east, south-east occasionally coming in. We're just uh, just down with the start boat, just off Middlehead, between Middlehead and Grotto Point, just going into the mouth of Middle Harbour. Today, I've got in commentary with me, welcome back, Paul... Mackenzie, Sausage, welcome back, brother. Hey, Jimmy. And joining, joining us today, very special guest, a big S, Stevie Bowen, uh, Vice President of Manly 16 Foot Skiff Club, key integral sponsor of the Sutec Building Consultant 16 Foot Skiff. Still dabbling, I see, last week in 16 Foot Skiff sailing yourself. Yes? As little as possible, Jimmy. <laughs> How long did it take you to recover, mate? Um, I think about Tuesday I came good. Yep. I don't think I'm built for it anymore. Too much sailing out there previously. Yep. But it was enjoyable with, with Georgia and Harry. It was a nice day out there. Glad for only the one race. Yes. We had a few uh, ginger beers before we started the race. We lost one. I had to go in for it. So we recovered it and uh, made sure we were fully hydrated before we started. The only way to do it, well done, how your sailing career has changed. Yeah, as it does. <laughs> So, as you guys know, both these boys sailed with Ruffy on the Sutec back in the day. Ruffy's now at Moon and Yachts. Ruffy wanted me to hit you up, Steve. When is he able to put in a sponsorship proposal to come back to the fold? Hey, Ruffy? Yeah. No chance. No, nah, that's what I thought too. Yeah, he really, he's really fallen away. I mean, obviously they fell away when I left and then it only got worse after that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it good when he's not here to defend himself? <laughs> well, I was talking about Paul then. I, was about that. <laughs> I knew it was about that. <laughs> we all need to get to that. Yeah, when I jumped off, it seemed to go a bit quicker. Yeah. Uh, well, that was just the uh, story of the of the Sutec, wasn't it, Paulie? Yeah, look, we've got the new boys out here now. We've had them in the gym. They've been working out. Yeah, they've got a gym sponsor as well on the Sutec yeah, this year. Yeah, we've so. lined them up. I've seen them down there occasionally. Yep. Um, which is good to see. Just now we need to see some results. So We've got to see them out in the water first. They haven't been out for a couple of weeks. No, so. they missed a couple of weeks. I think they were at Bathurst last weekend and the snow before that. So I don't think the sailing's high on their priority list, but uh, hopefully today. All right. And that being said, there's one of the 13s, Little Bartley Constructions. They're sailing with Middle Harbour Skiff Club today. They've got a combined fleet with them and a few 29ers joining them, which is great for... All the young guys coming through to to uh, try and build the fleet, which is I think is a fabulous thing. The little partnership they got going on there between Manly and Middle Harbour with the 13th fleet. Um, we might have a bit of a look back at club championship heat one and two. Two was abandoned, but we'll have a have a bit of a look back at uh, how that all went and refresh everyone's memory. Five, four, three. Two star. <laughs> oh, Moon! Oh, yes! Oh, no! Oh, Matt! Oh, no. Stand up! Wow. <laughs> He's not going to get oh, the end of this. I'm glad, we, I'm, I'm glad we got that on film. The little rock star that only wants to sail oh. on your races. Oh, Gets him oh, down. Oh, 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 oh. You see the Outback Marines on in plenty there as well. We're on, on the access capsizing on top of the Typhoon. Oh, and the Typhoon's down. They're, 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 they're all in. They're all in. Here come my young Sutec boy. He's left of screen. Oh, oh big no. Oh, yeah. oh, there's Imy. Oh, 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 Imy's gone in. Oh, sorry, I'm Imy's screwed. gone in. Yeah. Another one. Ben. Red Pump. Screaming into this bottom part. Get some of your best rides into Wesley when it goes right. Roundup coming up for the Imy. Yeah. Typhoon Trout, followed by the Ivy. Right behind them, the Climate Heroes coming in. Well, Devola. They're going to get there. Are they going to get there? Oh, I see. Climate Heroes. Climate Heroes in the clear. Climate Heroes around. 
and the fire stopping the bloom from the previous two weeks are upright and rumbling. Well done, boys. Leave the rooster only knows one way, doesn't it? Full speed. <laughs> just on screen here, he goes, goes through his jive and he's gone as well. Right, so now this is getting interesting. Who is upright? Red runs are in second. Let's see how they go here. Dodging the minefield. So we're following down Boonham with the drone here. You can see Gus earn his money. The Boonham going for a shoot. Yeah, they had Matty in there, so they just need to get the shoot to get down to the finish, I think. There's the red pumps. Red, red on screen, chasing him down, and I think that might have made him a little nervous. First blood to uh, Moon and Yachts. Welcome back. So, the Wild Wesley from two weeks ago, Paul, oh, three weeks ago, Paul. Was, uh, you're out here with, with, uh, with me and Fast Eddie. There was a bit of carnage, as we just saw in the highlights package. Plenty of carnage. I don't think we can promise the same with today's uh, breeze that we've got at the moment. It's a lot softer today. Going to be a little bit flicking around a little bit between east and the southeast, we think, or even a bit north. We never know with these kind of breezes. But yeah, it should be a a bit easier to follow as uh, someone watching on at home. I think I remember losing the leader for a whole lap last week. Yeah, we all did. We're all guilty of that. It was, uh, is, uh, they bolted. Yeah. Oh, it should be a bit more sedate today, but maybe a bit tighter racing, which should be good to see. Yeah, and as you've seen, first first blood to the to uh, Moon and Yachts, Ruffy Turner. So um, we'll have a look at the point score in a sec. And, but uh, there you go, on screen now, and you've got Red Pumps Red, red which is... Uh, Quite a story in itself. That's little Tyler Dransfield, a young bloke steering that. He's got Chris Williams and he's got a pretty handy forward end in Jackson Cranfield. But, um, you know, it's really good to see a young bloke stepping up into a 16. Uh, came from 29ers and taking it on in 25 knots. It was pretty impressive to see. And then third, you got Imy with um, young Dan Lynx um, steering that, another young guy, so it's great to see some of the young guys getting in there and taking over from us older blokes. That are... Where's Dan from? Dan's uh, 29er background again right. from RPA, uh, Royal Prince Alfred up there at Pittwater. And um, yeah, he's obviously Trent and uh, Lynx Effect, they, they sailed together in the 18s back in the day and obviously all still mingle in the same circles but it's great to have another great name in the in the team and there's Cunningham's you can see just in front of Typhoon with Nick Connor, Alex Chittenden and Michael Childs just on screen just trying to figure out what to do with uh, Typhoon with a few guests on board there today with uh, Pagey over in I think he said Israel didn't he? Yeah in Israel with the uh, four, uh, 470s but um, so who's... So Wilmot's well, well, on. Yeah, Wilmot's well, on. Otto Henry and Simon Hoffman. A um, couple of 49er guys. So they, uh, they've got a decent little pool of people to call upon this year, which is good to see. Lisa Bates getting out there with uh, Craig still out injured. Is he going to get a run? Will they let him back? Mate, he, he's going to have to go and order a new boat is what's going to have to happen. <laughs> he's not going to get back on that one anytime soon. Well, it'll be interesting to see how Nathan goes. He's fairly dominant sailing last week. Yeah, the mixing crew. Yeah, like well, having Pagey within, you know, it's like back when you were sailing with your brother. It's like you know, you just do it blindfolded. Yeah. You, you're not really communicating. You just know what that grunt means or whatever, and you know what's going to happen next. So, um, and then, you know, young Simon Hoffman jumping in the middle. Well, obviously, with Pagey with his role at Australian Sailing, um, yeah, they probably all talk the same language. Nice to see some high-caliber sailors out there. Yeah, it's um, it's really impressive, and you know, like I thought when Craig was telling me about the the wonderful idea that he had after, over a few beers with Nathan, I thought, oh yeah, we'll wait and see how this unfolds, and it did unfold, so which was good. Are they going to get Craig on to build the handicap soon, or what? Before the Nationals? They're going to have to, aren't they? <laughs> and there's contemporary pools, the, the the twins, Andrew and Maddie, and good old Andrew St John in the middle. Oh. Back. No, he's having the day off, isn't he? Is he? Saints off. He's off? Who's on? Saint. Saint told me that he's stepped off because we gave him too much grief last time. Oh, I, thought, uh, I thought he had thicker skin than that. 
camera shy. And there's uh, the Musto, Hugh Stoddard, Jamie Stoddard and Neil. New to the 16s this year. How have they been going? Um, going quick and imploding quickly as you as we all did when we first got into 16s they're a different beast yeah it's definitely here i've seen him dropping the trailer off last night oh here they go something's not right what's wrong up the rig not a good start to the day water temperatures around 17 degrees today so be nice. Put the, put the hay inside the rubber. Yeah, yeah inside the bungee, yeah. you think? I'd say so. That's, what that's, uh, like. that's where they're at, isn't it? Right yeah. at the, right the, the hounds. top hounds. How'd you used to get that out, Steve? You wouldn't climb Just up the rig, would you? <laughs> Just it. And don't tell anyone. <laughs> Jeez, that... They got it up pretty quick, though. They sorted it out nice and fast. Yeah. One thing I did notice on the Musto, though, S is a, was obviously a Van Munster boat with a spinnaker sheet. I believe that's where it was. And then it's um, they've gone to a conventional spinnaker bag in the in the boat. It's interesting. Well, I think it's always better, isn't it? I mean, you're going to save a lot more kites over the season. Yeah. The red pumps, I was talking to them around on the... Uh, Rigging park the other day about it, and they seem to love having the shoot. Yep. What else have we got there? There's Botany Access just heading into the towards the rocks with Employment Hero. I'm not sure who's steering that because I think young Will Devola is actually overseas doing something with drifting, car drifting. He's, uh, <laughs> yeah, over in America, I believe. Dolly, if you're listening, let us know. Um, but. Just seen on the back of the start boat, we can get out of everyone's hair here. They're on a W5, so it's a pretty long course. And that's Red Pumps Red there. Young Tyler, Chris and Jackson. Lightweights? Uh, I think Chris brings the, uh, yeah. the, the power yes. to the program. Yes. Just a little bit. So we're on 085 bearing to the top mark, so... They must Just start. a little bit to, well, to, we're going east, basically. Must have a secret formula with a heavy she hand. Well, they it should get, work for you. They should get a third boat. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the other red pumps just coming into the screen with, with oh, yeah, Bruce and... Uh, yeah, I'll find a boat with an old forehead hand soon. <laughs> Do they exist? <laughs> So yeah, red pumps, not red. Both yep. of them on screen here, easily confused. It's um, the little red dot at the back of the red pumps red lets us know that it's them. And they've, um, they've also got different spinnakers that still look very much the same, which makes it very difficult for us in here. Capital Brewing, one of our female skippers, young Jessica Rolls, does an amazing job, sales with her brother and Ed Rigby. And Steve, while we got you, you you were hugely involved from the start to the finish of the rebuild of St George 16 Foot Skiff Club. Um, you know, how's it all going? Um, it's a absolute credit to you and Ant for the amount of effort that you guys put in. Um, all voluntary, of course, and um, you know it was an amazing. Like the club is amazing. I've been down there several times and love the place, but. When are we getting one at Manly? <laughs> well, that's a big question. I've been arguing with Anne about that one. Yeah. Um, the club, look, it's been an immense effort. I think, really, we're going back to about 2014. We started this process, or possibly even earlier. Uh, we had a we had a moment there, or a couple of years, with Dalton House and possible partnership there. I think through the successes of Manly and the, the, the renovations we did down there, we got ourselves in a position we could do it ourselves. Um, and then we went forward from there. So there's been a few, fair few hair-raising times along the way. We've had finances, we've had COVID, we've had uh, a whole range of things being thrown at us, but we, we, we had an excellent build-up. We've got excellent uh, management as well in Matt Hazel. 
um, and John as well down there, and our, and also from the kitchen and Justin. So it's been a real team effort in bringing this whole thing together, and um, everyone should certainly be proud of it. I think even the other day, Justin went down there, who's the the sponsor of uh, Botany, Botany Access, and he said he was down there on a Wednesday, and he said there was 300 people or something in there for for lunch. So it certainly shows the success of the place, and hopefully we make the money and uh, we can continue to grow the class. Absolutely. We have one of the uh, veterans, shall we call it, outers on screen, Phil Cook. He'll go well today. With yeah. the... Uh, he hasn't got the Gruder brothers. He's got Kenny Walk in the middle. I've just seen with uh, Davy Gruder up there. On screen now, we've also got the world's oldest moth sailor, Peter Moore. Still out there at 75, 76, I think, giving it a red hot go. Still build, modifying and building his own boats. The bloke's pretty amazing. Not long from starting signals. So what are we thinking, boys? Who are we thinking around the top mark? First stop mark. First stop mark. I think um, i got a good feeling about the sail racing boys today. They've just come back. They took, a, they took it pretty easy last year, but if they click back into gear, this is their kind of conditions. They get on the wire, two-string it a bit earlier than everybody else, and it really go through the water well. they got their regular crew on board? I Paul? think so. I think so. You know, Tom Potter's a big... Yeah, what a, a big what, what about on that, that bloke on, on screen now? Shebang. How do you reckon that bloke will go? Oh, look, he'll have a good start. You know that much. He's the best uh, sheet hand steering in the fleet, that's for sure. Uh, they don't have too much weight on board, so, look, he'll be up there. I don't know about first, but certainly he'll be competitive. Phil Cook, if he gets a good start, he'll probably be going for a port yeah. hand or something, if yeah. the line's slightly biased. Yeah. If so, you could see him up the front. It's, uh, I mean, Nathan... We can never dismiss. Nathan will be definitely in the hunt there. It's just where they can gel and bring themselves together. I'm sure he'll get a good start too. From our um, time sailing with Ruffy ourselves, I know that this is his least favourite breeze possible. Anything with east in it, or coming out of the east, he just sort of pulls his hair out all morning. Gets a little bit stressed out, so, you know, see if he can pull it together and go through. He's, uh, I know he's missing Maddie on board today. I think um, he's... I had the uh, toll... Toll Islands race last yeah. night, so he's uh, he's part of the Andu Comanche program. So yeah, so they all have Kurt jumping back in. He's done a lot of sailing with them. They don't lose much there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and the replacement on the fire stopping there today on the sheet. You got Pete Warner has jumped in to help out. Um, Lockie's Lockie's long gone over to do some regatta overseas. Monte Carlo, he was worrying about whether his suit jacket would do up because you've got to wear a suit and tie to get into the uh, the club. So bad luck, Lockie, you can't comment back either. <laughs> 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 so there you go, we're over the pin looking back towards the start boat. So it's middle head in the background. It's, hey, it's the Navy base just there. And Balmoral just to the, to the right of the screen. I mean, this would, this would be the time right about now where you'd be calling the end of the line for us, wouldn't you, Paul? If we were out right there, yeah. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't, Two minutes 30 to go. I wasn't giving, allowed. Giving your, giving your wisdom. Oh, you know me, Steve. I give it five minutes after it's happened. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm Hindsight sailor. Oh, <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. <laughs> But as you look across this line, it's a bit of a tricky one. The pin looks a little bit high to me up there. However, we, you know, we've got a bit of tide running through this thing as well, so it's just going to make it a little bit more difficult than what we originally thought. Yeah, tide running out, so... And as you look up the course, it does look like there is a little bit more pressure in the right, where it's funneling through the head, so, you know, it's, it'd be very easy to get stuck in that left-hand corner, I reckon. Pin's probably not the go. No. Oh, there's a lot of waves there off Washaway too, isn't there? So a fair bit of swell. I'm putting it... Oh, if, I had, if I was a betting man today, Phil Cook is doing a Port Tucker in this line. Too, too, too far on the left <laughs> and you'd be out of the tide too, so... You want to be in the tide. You want to be in the tide. You want to be in the yeah. right. <laughs> well done, Polly. You've done the box tick. I learned something in the seven years, Steve. So I've just noticed on uh, on Iami, you got Shaw, Sean Connors jumped in to replace Treno. Treno's away. Yes. So, that's yeah, no great loss. <laughs> no. Uh, 
Please they won't need as many repairs with Sean on there, but <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll definitely lacking no ability there. Sean's one of our he's been doing top a lot of 49er sailing. guys. Yeah. So coming up to a minute. Everyone's all down all, this boat in. They're all conscious of the tide. They're all a fair way back. We call, we, we're calling general recall, Paulie. What do you think? Not sure. Suddenly's going to get himself into trouble here. Picking a bit of carnage off the back end of this boat. Just off screen to the left, there's a few people making each other spin around. But... AP. Trying to listen in to the hands start go boat. Little, hands go for a little run. Just quick off the line. So the start boats just put up an AP flag just before the start, so we're under postponement currently. So we're not quite sure why they've done it just at the moment, but I'm assuming they're going to be relay relaying a couple of marks or pulling the pin back possibly, or, you know, they'll have a good reason for it. Okay, I just heard from the start boat, they, uh, they just AP'd because the breeze kept going right, so... Um, there you go, Paul, you... Two out of two today. <laughs> it's the first time for every. <laughs> You're on a roll. Keep it up. <laughs> only I could do the, it at the work. Pressure, the, pre <laughs> the, the pressure of Steve. -O. If only you perform like that at work, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it's a, that's a, that's another that's another battle for you, Steve. <laughs> Steve, Steve couldn't get enough of me sailing with him. A, a year apart, and then he he may be coming at work for him as well. You know, I saw some potential somewhere else, <laughs> <laughs> and they they weren't available. <laughs> <laughs> but we've had a lot of fun, haven't we, Paul? Yeah, it's been good fun. Very races, enjoying sailing with Ruffy. Yeah, it's a good bloke to sail with Ruffy. Good keeps the boat nice and. Like, uh, always perfect. If it wasn't perfect, he always heard about it from Steve. Um, but no, it was good fun. I think it was six or seven years of us sailing together. It was, we had some good results, almost results. Yeah. But it was always good fun. I think uh, winning, we won, won a couple of Botany Bay championships there at the end. Yeah. Which, we... which had always eluded me. I'd never been yeah. able to get one with Clinton and previously. So not to win not one but two was... Uh, Pretty but satisfying, actually. It's a lot with you boys too. Yeah, that was the second one. Was one of the best races we sailed ever. I think it was a ten-minute win or something like that. And a smoking twenty-five knot nor'easter down the river. It's always good fun. We must, we must have been away that day. Oh, <laughs> I think you retired to let us win one, Jimmy. <laughs> There's the Sutek on screen. The mighty Sutek. Oh, here they are. So Go I, you boys! <laughs> <laughs> so I think they're still recovering from Bathurst last week. Um, saw them plonking around in gumboots all over social media, having a good time. <laughs> Just making sure that everybody can see the sponsor on the back. Okay, they're dropping the AP in 30 seconds. Thank you. So Nick on Cunningham's sailed with his brother, who's on the army for quite a while together. So I think there'll be a bit of a battle between those guys today. Nick's also one that likes to jag a good result in these kind of weathers. So Wait, they've been, they've, they come together, that team, at the beginning of this season, they've, they've become a great team. So the Cunningham boys? Yeah, like straight out of the box, so six minutes. Because it's, yeah. all, it's, it's all Nick with new sheet hand and forward hand, isn't it? It's Chits and... Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the Michael Childs. Michael Childs, yeah. One of the other directors of the club. Doing an excellent job. Yep. Mikey's got his usual stance there at the back of the boat. <laughs> Pretend, one, one leg cop. Pretending to know what he's looking at. We all do that. <laughs> and on the fireball just went in between us. I think that's Noel Powell is steering that today. 
Noel Power. Young Noel used to have the employment hero 13. They did quite well, didn't they, on that? Mate, he did very well. He's, um, yeah, he's a great junior coach. Like he's, um, we had him here at Manly, oh. and then he's shifted off. I think he's now down at Royal Prince Alfred. They made him a deal that he couldn't refuse. Him so. and Dolly put a quite a good team together there, didn't they? And had yeah. The, it was sort of part of that base success as well that sort of followed through in those juniors for the last couple of years. Yeah, the recipe's definitely right for us at Manly to get the kids through and successful and, yeah, I know every, every club has their own ways of doing it, but, uh, you know, we know what worked for us and that's what we keep at it. The other, the other one of interest today for the viewers at home is Outback Marine, powered by Victron, is the three Clancy girls sailing together. So you've got Georgia steering, Lana up the bow, and Maddie Clancy making a debut on the sheet. I would pick Maddie to not be on the sheet. How, how would you organise that crew, Paul, so that you know them best? I've spent a bit of time in a boat with Georgia and Alana. Um, I'd actually be putting Maddie on the stick. She's, she, you know, she's, she's quite good at steering. And not to take it away from Maddie, but I think the other two are quite good crews in their own right. And they're just sort of... There they are on screen, the girls. Let's see if we can figure it out. George is down the back, it looks like. Oh, it? George is. Errol died with the, the tiller. <laughs> if the breeze dies off, that's it. The, there's, there's uh, not much. be quick through the water, there's not much weight on board. Yeah. yeah. And I was totally wrong with what I said by the looks of it. You get to Stewie Graham if you're watching. Stewie ex Bowman from the Typhoon era. And. Start with, uh, who else did you say? Beaky, Beaky global, on the global, global storage. Global storage. Yeah, g'day, Stewie. I hope you and Lorraine are well up there at the Goldie. And um, yeah, if you need any marine stuff or marine electronic stuff done. Sure, certainly a proud member of the Foreign Hands Union, Stewie. I think, yeah, he's a very strong card carrying member. Never quite understood that union. They don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand themselves anyway, Paul. So don't worry about it. We've got just on, just a bit over two two minutes forty five to go to a start. You still liking the right here, Paul? Well, just the amount it's flicking around. If they've just picked up, it's gone right. You probably find it's going to go back left soon. Yep. It's just got that sort of feel about it. Or it's not going to be stable. I'm still I'm still a bit wary of the left though. I don't know. Just feel like it's just. It just sort of looks like you could get a bit bogged down over there. So stay out this side and see if you can get some tide to shoot you up towards the top mark. Yeah, you want a bit of feeling. tidal influence. But I mean, with the tide comes a little bit of lump, so you know, got to keep the boat going quick through the water and that stuff. So we'll just see how everybody goes. Are the Middle Hobart's racing now? They look like it, don't they? Yeah, Middle Harbour's already started, so they're a long way up, of course. It not the, on the screen. The guys on the left don't look too favourable at the moment. No. So that's where the fire stopping will hit. <laughs> did you give them that advice, did you? Mate, I gave him one simple chat the other day. I said, you got an Olympic gold medalist out there. Let him do the tactics for you. Just follow him until you <laughs> nice. work it out from there. <laughs> so he, um, young Alex is super keen, like lovely kid, lovely lovely family. His sister's sailing a 13 this year. She's on the Botany Scaffold, so with um, Bella Devola. So, you know, just sort of got that boat back and we um, just doing a bit of a mentoring thing with them, just trying to get them to do everything themselves. They are. They gave me a call during the week. Asked me to, asked me first of all to sail today, however, I had other commitments when I looked at the <laughs> forecast. And, uh, but um, I'm actually jumping on next week with them, so it should be a bit interesting. Mate, for we... me, I've had a bit of time off, but I, I'm really looking forward to it. One minute to for go. For once, I won't be staring at the back of that red boat, so I'll be pretty happy. Just, you just got to get up the front, Polly. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> All going down the pit end now. Yeah. Yeah, so Moon and Sutek. Fireball. Where's Nathan? Red pumps. Nathan's just behind the camera boat. He's buried under Botany Access and Typhoon. So it looks just like to the left of screen at the moment. Yeah, just to the left, it looks like Cunningham's just positioned themselves well for the boat with Botany trying to squeeze them out. 
Just behind them is Nathan. 15 on the seconds. Two tech looks like you're going to be closest to pin. They're all racing down on that pin now, aren't they? Tommy doesn't look too bad. Pressure of having the sponsor Three, out here. Two, one. So it seems the two sponsored boats out here didn't listen to the advice from the sponsors, which was try and stay near the Olympic gold medalist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and have all run down to the pin is the left. Well, there's no point in having being out here if you're not under pressure. <laughs> Felix has got a little bit of room there to, to run yeah. away if he need be, so he's in a nice position. Yeah, I like Felix's position here on the sail racing. Driving the boat up. The the boats down the pin end have freed the boats up and they're trying to run away and get some clear air. So on screen at the moment we've got the boats that came off the boat. So they're all sort of in a bit of a pinching mode trying to squeeze each other out with a couple of them trying to live and you know we can just see Imy having to bail out and Cunningham's. There's always a tendency in this breeze to sort of work back towards middle head and then take a long one across the flag stuff. You'll find the later laps, you'll they'll all start doing the same, similar sorts of things. Well, it compresses on the headland, doesn't it? So, you know, yeah. you, you feel like you're coming into plenty more pressure. It's just the angles that you've got to try and work and work the tide there. Ruffy's coming back. So Ruffy on the moon and heading back. He's taken, taken the sterns of all the guys that came off the boat. But, um... with everybody else. So we've got about three or four boats out in the right that have all flicked back on middle head. And then everybody else taking the long board out to the left at the moment. What do you think? What's my food in the bottom left hand corner? There's the Olympic gold medalist in the bottom left hand corner of that shot there. <laughs> Rubby's safe so, back again. <clears throat> I don't see fire stopping anywhere around him, so. Fire stopping's doing all right, Jimmy. Just having a look out the window. They're sort of leading the left group over there. Yeah, well, Pete, Pete's on board. Bit of an older head and a bit, wi bit wiser. Um, you know, like he's been away for a little bit, so it's been a bit of a, a challenge to find decent guys who can still jump in there. I'm too broken to jump into the skiffs these days. So, so on screen, we've just seen a few gains be made by Moon in, in this right-hand corner. The sail racing are leading the pack off the boat, just having to take their stern. However, as we sort of alluded to, this right-hand side's looking quite nice, so we'll just see how they all go over there. Well, Surtex coming back then, he's, he's gone back again. He was coming back on port, he was coming right back through the whole fleet there, so... <laughs> sail racing's getting uh, there. Well, the most right boat here now, because we're following them out here on board tack. Bit of pressure out here too. Yeah, that just seems to be a little bit funneling through the heads. Yeah, you'd say that they're the only boat that's two string across the course at the moment, wouldn't you? So when they come into these rocks on the right hand side here, you also get the little bit of an added advantage of a bit of a backwash as you come out. So it can just shoot you back across the course and you get a few runners under you, which can just help you keep the nose up a little bit higher. I think, I think I'd be a lot more comfortable in the right at the moment than in the left. <laughs> so we just flicked over to these boats over the left-hand side on screen. It's... Um, just trying to make out that first boat that's leading my left with Altus, which is, as Steve predicts, is it, is it an It's fluid, isn't it? Yeah. It's fluid leading the boats left with the two red pumps in hot pursuit by the looks of it. Clint's never really enjoyed an easterly. I loves an easterly. Yeah. But it's going to be an interesting one when they come back together because it looks like... Um, the boats that went a little bit further right just seem to be falling into the boats on the left. Just, just, we'll just see. Yeah, so you, can, you can sometimes slot into a bit of tide coming back out of there and then lift out significantly, so we'll know in about a minute or two. 
Well, we could also get, be getting a bit of pressure just funneling out from down towards the skiff club as well, coming out of the Manly Bay. Sometimes you get a bit of a left-hander, but um, it's very localised off the point there. There's the Commodore there on Southerly, with the big S on the sail. Is that just in, in love of you, is it S? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> he, 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 put, he put us in the piss last weekend, actually. <laughs> yeah, lovely Port Hannah straight in front of us. And, um, so you're on we speaking terms? Oh, absolutely. A few beers afterwards and everything was forgiven. Always right. <laughs> Which red pumps is that coming back towards that's, us? That's the young red. No, that's Bruce, isn't it? That's the red pumps. I think that's, yeah, I think that's Bruce. Bruce. Yeah. Being at Red Pumps with Greg and uh, young Jay Harris. Old man Jay Harris. You've done quite well over in the left. They have now, yeah. <laughs> they seem to have dropped away over here in the right. Yeah, they just all look like they were folding down into them. Yep, that is the Red Pumps with Typhoon behind them. Typhoon and Musto just Musto just try, trying to keep his bow forward on Typhoon. Yeah. You'd probably think about taking back, wouldn't you, if the red pumps now? You've sort of got the fleet fairly boxed out. Especially when you've made a couple of gains over in the left yourself. You'd be, uh, Hedge your bets. It'd be you, your manoeuvre, isn't it, Steve? Get in front. Stay That's between right. them and the next mark. That's it. Keep it simple. Oh, what? I don't know. Mine was really just be first around the top mark yeah, and stay there. That's, I was trying to remember it. Yeah. <laughs> be first around the first mark and don't let anyone pass you. Between you and Robbie Napper, it was very animated. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, have you dare call something here, Paul? What do you think? No, I'm trying to. It's pretty fickle, isn't it? Yeah. Jimmy's call of me getting too right early on seems to be very far off. <laughs> so I might just stay quiet for the next little bit. Just, uh, <laughs> Mate, when, 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 we, when we do the 18s, Shippo always gets me and Bucko to pick you know, yeah, where know. we want to go. And then he tells you the top mark and it's like, well, hold on. Like, fair go. So it's, it's interesting as we look at, we've sort of got the red pumps red here, which are now extending out on Port Tack to the right hand side. I'd say they'd be the most southerly boat in the fleet at the moment with the fire stopping behind them. Well, they've been out training, um, like both red pumps have been out training probably the most out of everyone yeah. at the moment. So, which is, it's great to see. Um, you know, as you guys know, you don't win nationals, but just, well, you do if you're Nathan Wilmot, but um, <laughs> yeah, you, you've got to get out there, go training. <laughs> I know what it's down. like to win a national title, Jimmy, unfortunately. Oh, sorry. I was, I was, I was, I was talking to Steve. I, sorry, Paul, I forgot. <laughs> and hence, I can't sail anymore. There's, there's, there's one of the uh, Middle Arbor boats just on, on the screen. There's another one that's the Middle Arbor fleet. They're literally overlapping fleets today, so we'll get a bit confused. There's the brand sense from Middle Harbour. Our blokes are all over to the... Keep coming around. Over to the left, that's us. Typhoon, gone the helter yeah, skelter. Exactly what you said to do, wasn't it, Paul? Go, go hard left. Yeah, just one tack. Follow the gold medal. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I think you hit the mark, nail on the head, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, have, have a look at where they are, even though they're not on the screen. Have a look at where fire stopping is over here. You know what I mean? I think, so I think Alex, I've got to introduce Alex to Nathan just so. That, there's any fear or something. Just just always rem remind Alex too, if Lee's out here as well, you've got another one that you can watch yeah. too. Yes. <laughs> so Nathan's definitely dominating, isn't he? He's, Nathan's done well out of this. Red Pumps who led that left group. We've got Moon and Yachts there, which is Ruffy, and he's just tacked back. Both of you guys obviously so are Ruffy. Where's Ruffy's head at right now in this race? Like, is he generally calm? or? Like yeah, I know, Steve, I, like a few times you saw with us, you're always the calming influence for when you jumped on the fire stopping a few times. But I'm generally not when I'm saying with my own boys. Though. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Ruffy here, he wouldn't be saying too much. He never does. Ruffy, Ruffy. Gus is an excellent sheet hand. There'll be plenty of information, plenty of feedback getting back to Ruffy at the moment. 
I think he's probably just trying to hold in there and get himself maybe around the top top five. But it just it just depends really on these other boats heading out to the south. I think as we look at it now too, we're starting to get two on wide too. Ruffy will really trust his speed in these conditions. Yeah. And just try and he'll sort of just go, hey, if we go around fifth, let's he's just big on, let's just chip away at them. And then it, if we can get to it at the end, let's put some pressure on some people. And there we are, right in the back door of the typhoon there. So traditionally with this this way, the, the way the breezes normally have a bit more of a bigger swell rolling through their heads, which normally makes the knees knock a little bit from some of the other boys from other clubs that don't go, don't get to have the fun that we have here. Just did another 10 knots, really, don't you? Yeah. That really gets them excited. Yep. Big Wednesday, that Nationals. That was, uh, that was <laughs> fresh to frightening. It was a good day. Nice, nice flat boat there on Typhoon. That. Nice trim. They're just trying to squeeze themselves up. Nathan's hailing up and down the backs of these waves. Looks very, very smooth on that boat at the moment. They've really stepped out on Imy there, haven't they? And then the two, I can't believe he's up there, is the contemporary pool, so maybe it is sunk. <laughs> <laughs> Musto in the background, Hugh Stutter. Like he's another one that's been out training a lot. And so then, yeah. so I know you, Jimmy, you're out in the water quite a bit. So you just notice a lot of these guys out here midweek, just trying to. No, jump. I was when I'm sitting at the skiff club, supporting, the, <laughs> making sure that these guys are supported well, so they have money for prize money. Does it seem? Does it seem like a few of them are getting out together and doing a bit of training or is it a bit of, you know, go out there and they're working on their own processes at the moment? Or? A lot of them are sort of going out by themselves, which, you know, like my blokes go out by themselves. We're not, they, oh, you know, we'll have really good speed. We had really good height. Well, we all know that one. We've all, <laughs> we've all had that one. Um, there's no point in getting out by yourself. Like, you know, you got two blokes in Baz and Phil Harmer both offering their services because obviously, because there's obviously a... Uh, Different sales and so forth, but yeah, you know, everyone's offering services to help guys, and you know, it's just um, you know, the, the red pumps guys generally go out um, as a pairing, which is great, and I know they're trialling all different things, so um, not many others are going out. Um, Musto is fire stopping, and I think that's about it. Ruffy's keeping up his track record of no training. Nice set on the Typhoon just there. Very nice set. With Musto coming around the mark second here. See how these boys go. Where's the Sail Racing boys? Have you seen them? Like I, 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 they, they followed my advice up the first work, so I think they're back at about 21st. Well, they look famous on the tag, but in an easterly. It's too early to be calling those things, isn't it? Yep. There's the Botany Access just going around now. The two brothers, lock your ears. And, and Gerard Smith, and then Red Pumps Red. Right, he gets his, comes around the top five there. Yeah. Let's see just... if Ruffy can get away here. He's trying to get his shoot up and pump in front of the Red Pumps here. No, so he's it's got a... a wine glass, just broke it out. So that's the diff difference that between us. A spinnaker shoot and a conventional shoot right there. Yeah. Comes the next red pumps. Just get Rob to come back around. He's left. King Brothers, fluid right behind them. It's a race within a race, that one, isn't it? Yeah, There's well, a couple of schooners on that each week. And had already told me. He said, whatever happens, we're just going to lamp it on, on Clint. So we go on. Is that tack line just blew off? That's some good, more good boat maintenance from Phil Harmer there. <laughs> it's the first time back on the boat this year, I think, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. Paul, he's... Yeah, it looks um, like he's spent a bit of time down at Harry's Cafe de Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> Clint was guaranteeing a, play, a top three last night, so we'll just see how he goes. Talking the big game. Yeah. Well, it's, it's tough working these easterlies now, isn't it? Flight your way back. Yeah. Especially from what we saw up that first leg. Unless we see this breeze start to flick around a bit, it looked like it was... Very much so, get into that left-hand corner. No, I mean, 
very deep for their program. Very deep. I'm sure Robbie Napper will be nice and calm and collected. <laughs> Altus and Sutek. Oh, at least look, look who's coming behind them. Got fire stopping coming behind Sutek, so oh, there, there we go. A couple of attacks for the uh, fire stopping there to get around the top mark. Nothing like coming in on port. There's uh, all the boats heading off down to what we know as the bombies. Um, they're in Tanya Park in the background. So we're sort of closer to North Head than South Head where they've got the top mark. Doesn't look like anyone's game to uh, jive back off again and head back into the side. No, oh. it's, uh, that's the problem with these um, these easterlies, as you're alluding to, Paulie, like, you know, it basically, uh, you know, becomes, after the first lap, becomes a follow the leader because it's, everyone's all, uh, yeah, I mean, worked it all out. And there you go, we put the commentator's curse on Cunningham, so there's no extra charge for that. I talk them up and look where they are. Well done. Yeah. The, uh, the other thing about these easterlies that can happen, though, is you'll just see somebody come from about 10th through to 2nd just by going on a flyer up one of the works. And, yeah. then, and then you'll notice that person if you can, you know, you're sitting in that fourth or fifth, you go, I'll try it next time, and then you'll go back to 25th. So it's a tough breeze to sail in. Just see. Really all boat handling now, isn't it? Just trying to inch your, your way down there and get a few metres here and there. So the, particularly downhill. It's a hard day on the foreign hands these ones, isn't it? Trying to get down these waves. And, Outback Marine on screen, the three sisters. And not the ones at uh, Katoomba. Now just sticks over to Southerly. There's the Southerly. Nice top down. Lovely spot of the Southerly then. It's nice to finally see some sun in Sydney though, isn't it? Fantastic. Yeah. Sitting down there at the skip club, having a couple of wine beers before we came out. It was very few enjoyable. relaxes? Yeah. yeah. I sort of, when we got to Mount, I'm sort of having a look for you because Paulie put me off the scent saying you're at Hugo's. So. <laughs> we were thinking about it, but then I uh, couldn't get a book. He was promising to take me for months. We've oh. been doing that for about 12 months. So. Oh. So not employee of the month or anything. That's nah, not, that no, no, been I'm not employee of the month. Steve gives there's it a, to himself each month. There's a couple of months left <laughs> this year. Look, he's still got time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll make our way down to the bottom mark. So they're on a W5, so we would finish five laps. We got gate marks at the bottom, don't we, Jimmy? Yeah, gate marks, and you've got to go in between the gate and around. Anyone then... game to say which way they go around these gates? <laughs> Right to the right. The right hand turn, I reckon. Sometimes it's that little dig just across the bobby and then come way to the back. We'll see what happens. So as you see here, we got the two. I feel like the sail racing. What have we got there? There's the two red pumps on screen. And you can see the sail racing coming coming down them on Port Shore. They look like they've come back into it a little bit there. Yeah, they have. The boat that went furthest left on the course seems to have pulled back up. It's interesting. That's telling you something, isn't it? And the red bumps red snuck back in front of the sponsor there on screen. Jay just going around the front of the last there. Very There's sweet. only enough room in the, through the boat there for Greg, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Jared Smith's laid claim to be the first one to go around the front of the mast. Well, Clint seems to have slipped away there from Ed. Ed had him on the, around the top mark. This is going to be tighter than you it's think here at this part of mark, boys. So it looks like here, here Botany. Botany access. Oh. The Botany would be very happy about that. They're not yeah. yelling and screaming at each other by now. Yeah. I mean, is this setting it up perfectly for more yelling and screaming pretty soon? That's right, you get it. Oh, 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 he's just crawling. Oh, oh, no. Oh. no. I 
I feel a little bit bad now. Wow. We're just talking about that yelling so, and screaming. See the power of the commentator's curse? It is awesome, isn't it? <laughs> you try and wish it on someone in a race when you're sailing and it never happened. Well, Nathan. <clears throat> Nathan, Nathan not around cleanly at the other mark. And Hugh Stoddart on Musto trying to go up win there with his spinnaker up. It's a good oh. save there from the Botany boys, though. They seem to have got around the mark and not dropped back too far. Jerry did really well ripping that back in. Yeah, pretty yep. impressive. We would have thought they would have got on the drink. Ruffy, so far, the cleanest there with Red Pump's red Very just good behind them. From Ruffy there, yeah. And then the other Red Pumps are going to the other mark with <clears throat> long time rival Fluid right below him. Is, uh, the fluid's done really well there, haven't they? They've really yeah. sort of jumped up to this front pack a little bit. Is it a beer per leg, the way the back goes between those boys, or is it... Uh, no, I think it's just one overall. One overall. Fair enough. So racing, where do we get there? Nice rounding from them. Bartley coming in here. I think the rest of them are all going to go this left-hand mark. It's a, you sort of sit under these shoots for a little bit when you take this right-hand mark, though. Yeah. Left-hand mark, but sort of got to cop a bit of grief from everybody coming back down. There's the employment hero to the right of screen. Southerly. Late, late drop. Very late drop. There's, there's a forehead hand of an elder generation for you, Steve, still out there. Well, I think he's a few years younger than me. Do you reckon? I mean, I'm only 42, so... <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're now international. Just got a message from our page in Israel, so you beauty. So we've, he, taken this, we've taken this class international now. Can he give us a tip on which way to go? <laughs> he probably will. <laughs> what, do you, what do you know from that shot there, Mel? Let us know which way you go. We'll let you know which way Nathan's gone. And don't say the opposite way to Nathan either. <laughs> We've got still to come here. Got, got the outback marine. The fire stopping. Trying very hard to Yeah, they're having to get make, out. Make friends. It's got clear clear air in the right. They're all just following a jump here on the left hand side, aren't they? Yeah, I think it says the guys that went round the left hand turn at the bottom, it would just be interesting to see if they fall back into these guys who went headed straight off to the left again like the first one. They seem to be holding up pretty well at the moment in this shot. You can sort of see the Moon and, and Co in the right up there. But these guys down the bottom, they're the ones that have gone straight around the left hand gap. Okay, and we'll get up with the guys over in the left, I guess. We'd be the... I feel the breeze is just going around the right there a little bit more, Paul? I don't think it has. I don't think it has. And as we saw last time, Steve, when we went further out the course and clicked back, it was sort of coming out of... Little Manly up in there, it just seemed to get a little bit of left in it, which saved the guys on the left last time. Just sitting here over the top of the bunch, which went around the right-hand turn at the bottom. Sort of had a little cheeky dig out to the right. So it's Botany Access and Moonen leading them back across. With Red Pump's Red Hot in Pursuit behind them. Just say good, good recovery from the Botany, given he put the, put the uh, shoot in the drink. Very good recovery. Yep. And just as you've seen before, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Leave some comments, whatever you like. We'll do our best to uh, get back to you on the uh, 29th when we're back here at Manly. You've got a um, wealth of knowledge. We can email around a few people as well, and uh, if we don't know the answer, so we're not cheating. But, uh, yeah, let us know if you're liking it. Hit the like button, do all the fun stuff. Feel free to uh, engage in the socials on there as well. And, you know, if, uh, to 
see what we're up to next at Sale Media. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And well, tomorrow we're off to do the 18s. You boys, you boys can have a rest. I'll, <laughs> I'll take the uh, the boys we take get, to the 18s. We we'll get the A team on tomorrow, will you, Jimmy? Well, Bucko's not Bucko's not A, but uh, he's A person. Yes. <laughs> Great Ward. We love him. And uh, yeah, I'll be joining commentary tomorrow for that for the 18s with Peter Shipway, the great Pete, who's because it's a model that you've sort of run over there that you're we're bringing over to Manly, isn't it? You know. Yeah, we've got a we've got a, a few little exciting additions that we're going to be bringing to Manly before we take them anywhere near the 18s. Um, you know, the the board at Manly were kind enough to. Uh, get us on board this year and do the live streaming and we're live streaming the Nationals in the 100th year for the club which is awesome uh, we're really looking forward to it and the you know in doing that like we're, we're trialing some things that we don't want to let people know because if they don't work we don't want people to be disappointed <laughs> but uh, definitely got to have multi-camera um, you know live streaming and, and yeah it'll be a, a really cool affair it's, um, so we can see here Moonen again, as we sort of alluded to, they're just chipping their way through this fleet. Looks like they're up to second there with the with Bruce on the red pumps below him. But uh, they're just going behind Nathan, he's about 10, 15 boat legs ahead. Nathan is pretty much on the Typhoon run the exact same course as last time. Um, Looks like we're pretty well setting up for that soldiers course now. They've yeah, figured out yeah. the lanes and uh, that's where they're going to stick it looks like. It's, it's just going to be some uh, boat handling and... Yeah. So, now Paige just said... Now Paige just came back to us just saying, when in doubt, go left. <laughs> so. Robbie's just come back. He's, he's worked his way through the fleet there. He looks to be in about second now. Yeah. Red pumps there. And I could see Katuk coming through the heads. <laughs> oh. Missed the race by that much. <laughs> had a good chat to Katuk during the week. Just tried to suss him out a little bit. See if he could get me some new weddy pants for next week. I think I need some before I jump on the fire something. But, uh, I'm sure Pat from Vicobi can sort you out, mate. <laughs> oh, you just let us know what you need. We'll, we'll chat to our mate, Pat. That sounds very good to me. He'll sort you out. You've got to look the part. But Matty was uh, quite happy that he wasn't sailing on the Sutec today with me and Steve Owen commentary. You know, he's, uh, he took over from Steve on the Sutec initially. On the moon. And on the moon, and sorry. Uh, took over from Steve Owen. Steve Owen always had a bit of input into the way that Matty was sailing the boat in those first couple of years. Nathan's starting to dominate now. Who have we got on screen here? That's Moonen on screen again there. Moonen. I mean, the trim on Moonen looks wonderful, doesn't it? Both yeah. play as. There's Red Pumps and Sail Racing just tacking those Kilbourne Towers in the background. So they're sort of up in just off Flagstaff or traditionally now on Can I? It's Red Pumps. Okay. Moonen, and if we keep coming around to our left, we'll just pick up Typhoon right there. Just, just, there's the leaders. Just building on their lead gradually, aren't they? Yeah, it's fairly comfortable now. He's probably got 100 metres on them at the moment, at least. Yeah, but roughly looks like he's got the bit between the teeth on the Moonen. Yeah, he's really so, grinding away at the moment. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Nathan will be feeling comfortable right at this moment. No. <laughs> he's got a higher line coming in too, Ruffy. He just looks like he's sailing a little higher. 
It'll be interesting down this run though. Rafi, just sort of noticed over the last year, he just seems to have a bit of an edge on his downwind speed on a lot of the other guys. So it'll just be interesting to see if he can follow Nathan upwind. Cause we've still got two, three or three downwinds where he can really just have a crack at him and get close enough to try and put a bit of pressure on him downwind is where I expect to see Ruffy try and get through him. But it, from past experience, one of the hardest blokes to pass in these 16s when, when we were sailing is uh, Nathan. He's very good at putting you in a box, sort of holding you, putting you where you don't want to go and just sort of doing that little jump out. Clint, but this big bloke was always my nemesis. <laughs> <laughs> I'd always say Lee, Lee Napton. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, that both. I remember sailing down to Dromoy one time and I was sailing with uh, Paul and Ruffy and we're in second place behind Lee and... I said, I'm just going to have a little conversation with Lee here and we'll put him up his game, you know. So I said, I'll tap on the boat when we're going to tack. So we go through, and I'm talking to Lee, and he just turns around backwards, still steers the boat, looks at me, having a conversation. I tap on the boat, we tack. He tacks back, just still looking at me, talking to me. <laughs> we, did, we, you know, we did this five times, bang, bang. He was, bang, he was bang. going forward and pulling the board up as yeah. well, wasn't he? And, and, just... and then on the sixth one, I tapped, uh, tacked it. Occasionally, you'd have a look around. The sixth one, I tacked it, and he kept going. The next time we came back, he was about 60 metres in front of us, so <laughs> a little general. Yep, a little maestro. Mooning around second, about 20 seconds behind the Typhoon with red pumps, the main red pumps for Bruce Savage. It's a nice round in third. Nice red pumps moon. red around in fourth, team orders. Yeah, red pumps. Uh, and nope. then botany access, so... Uh, and then look who's coming in from the... They'll come in from the right of screen here in a second. Any makes, second. Any second. There they are, sail racing. He's done well to come back. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's coming through quick there, isn't he? I just watched him coming up Bill before there. He just looked a little low in the water, actually. Yeah, they overstood that mark too, so, yeah, it's a bit of time left on the track. And then shebang... And King, he's um, done well against his nemesis. He has. Very well, well. A bit more boat speed up hill, it looks like. When you pull a bloke out of the cupboard of uh, Brent Dennis's calibre that's been <laughs> hiding for two or three years, <laughs> yeah. doesn't take much for Breno to get back into it. No, I think he's been trying to keep a low profile, Brent. He he's has. <laughs> Got the shebang there, Ant. And trying to tidy up some of the uh, spaghetti in the bottom of the boat there. Brother Jamie King in the bow. And there's the two red pumps charging on down. I think from the last time down, they're all going to look to try and pick this low line out here as well as they can, because it looked like the little drive back at the end didn't pay too well at the end last time. There's first, second and third on screen with uh, the Typhoon just jiving, Ruffy covering him off on the Moon and Yachts, and Red Pumps, the big boss's boat, I guess is the best way to describe it. Greg Windus owns both boats and manages both boats and it's a great little uh, initiative. I think he got the new boat just because he didn't like something, the colour of the red or something. It was a, a shade out. <laughs> he's, uh, he's really come back with a lot of enthusiasm, hasn't he? Mate, he's come back amazingly. And a, a, lot and a of wall full of cash too. Got to see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he means business. He's obviously very keen. Bruce there as well. Yeah, and as Jimmy was saying, he's getting... Both, both teams are out sailing a lot. They've probably done the most sails on the water out of everyone this year easily already. And Bruce's constant support on Lindy. She'll be, she'll be around somewhere, no, no doubt. Over there on Champagne Rock for sure. <laughs> There's the rough nuts on the screen. G'day to Hamish, his little bloke, if he's watching, he apparently was all upset last night that I wasn't at the club when Ruffy stuck in for a cheeky beer with Hamish. He was all upset that, where's Jimmy, where's Jimmy? So, g'day mate, if you're watching. 
So Ruffy here is just driving inside the typhoon, hoping to get a puff and just trying to squeeze his way down to him. However, Nathan looks like he's coming in pretty hot to this bottom mark. Yeah. So now on screen. Employment hero. The Busto. The Busto, yep. They've sort of slipped back a tiny bit from their first work heroics. The Typhoon again. Yeah, he looks really comfortable there, doesn't he? He does. Just in the back of Sal Racing there. I think you put it, you know, put a highlight on them for the Nationals. I think they, you know, they can string it together in favourable conditions. They're showing definitely, definitely all year that, or even last year, that they had good speed. So you know, they're. Um, I think uh, I had a chat to the boys about last year because I think they had a bit of a disappointing year last year on the sale race. Yeah, but still, they still were consistent. They didn't yeah. get the, the big, you know, they the big did. ones, but. but yeah. Um, they were putting in a bit of effort the year before, and I think last year it was kind of a let's take a bit of a step back. Yeah, right. They're, 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 not, they're not too far off, really, are they? No. And a bit of time on the water for those boys, I think. They'll be really pushing up the front. There's good heads on that boat. And Especially if we get a classic Sydney light easterlies all through the beginning of January, they could be. Nor Aces, we want 25 not Nor Aces. Yeah, but we'll sell it. And three, we want, we want three big sell Aces with a big rolling swell as well, right? Well, Definitely need one of those. Just to ensure a manly victory. <laughs> <laughs> Although, can we have that before a May Day, I reckon? That's what the boys will be asking for. And it's always nice to see the uh, What's the Eyes of the Belmont boys coming down that swell. Yeah, and uh, congratulations to Belmont 16 footers who had their centenary of sailing at Belmont regatta last week and 90 odd skiffs from all different classes attended, including the vintage 18s, which I believe didn't get off the trailer. The beer was too nice at the club. What do you think? It's... So Ruppy's made up a little bit of ground down there, doesn't it? Yeah. It was about a 20 second delta at the top, Steve, so, yeah. Matty's come back through the head, so the pressure's on, they've got to step up. <laughs> <laughs> so who's in the bow at the moment on the moon? And, uh, be probably Kurt, wouldn't Kurt. it? Kurt Mitchell. Kurt. So, I mean, he's had a full season with Ruffy and Gus before, he knows the systems. Got a little issue there. Yeah. That's no, Red Pump's so red in the background there, that red spinnaker coming down. The boss is in front of them. It's going to be tight here between red pumps and uh, botany. I think the, uh, all the training is certainly paying off with the red pumps. Well, I think this will be the first time this season, if the results stay the way they are, Steve, that red pumps has been red pumps red. It's, it's a commentator's curse if I've ever heard. <laughs> 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 Vernon's got, he's up the track there, you can't see him on camera. Still a few issues. On screen, Star Racing, just taking another, picking off another one. Shebang going the opposite mark. Which way would you go now, Polly? Which mark? Pretty, pretty confident in the left now. Yeah, <laughs> so. Especially since Mal's told me to go left too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> It's just as we have got um, Musto coming in here too. Nice conventional drop. Should get this away nice and early before the mark. I, did, I didn't find out who's steering the employment hero, so... If, uh, it's Dolly hasn't told you? No. Hope Dolly's getting better. He's... Uh, going through the wars, but had some surgery and he's coming. Last time I spoke to him, he says he's good, but yeah, I know he puts on a brave face. And 
North Sales patch there going around. That'd be fluid. Putting Berg under some pressure there. Oh, he loves it. Mm. Yeah, I think he's finding a little challenging actually up there with these boats yelling at him. He likes them a little bit more relaxed. He's got a few issues going on there too. <laughs> Wouldn't have happened in your day, would it, Es? Well, no, that's right. Mm. There's employment here over with Imi. Imi's slowly getting back through them, but yeah. still a long way to, to go for them. No mistakes from Rob. No, never any mistakes from Rob. He loves the pressure. Used to tie special knots in there for him every now and then. If he you know, if he was too quiet up at work, we'd just tie a couple of knots just to <laughs> make sure he's alive. Just to get his blood pressure up again, huh? Well, you know, he couldn't let it drop too much. You don't want you never want a forehead to have too relaxed, do you? No. Nah. Just want them on the edge a little bit. Oh, he was on the edge. <laughs> There's the Bartley and the uh, Capital Brewing going around. And then who we got here is the Su Tech. Su Tech, reset and sweat. I think they should have reset at the beginning. Mm. Gone the other way. If they throw another oh. cheeky tack halfway up through this work, I think they might be getting a phone call from the sponsor during the week. Look, I think they've come back into the fleet a little bit. Steve, they're going to pull out the Kerry Packer. Call is he halfway <laughs> through a broadcast? <laughs> no, good bunch of boys. Great bunch of boys. Yeah, they're, they're good, good value. It's, boys. A, it's, it's a tough one in this lumpy stuff too, throwing a new sheet hand in there as well. You know, upwind, just trying to... We noticed on those boats up the front how smooth that they were. But it's that symmetry that you're trying to find between yeah. the sheet hand and the skipper pull is you're alluding to. Like, it's, a, it's key critically in a 16-foot skip. It's not so much important in... Yeah, like an 18 foot skiff float or things yeah. like that. Like, there's a lot more working. Um, it's all about communication, and then yeah. when you've done it for long enough, you, it's not even said. And then it's also the impact I always found from the foreign hand who just, you know, just lets you know, gives you a little kick, hey, you boys are you're reaching around here. You gotta, or, or we're not going through the water quick enough. It's, well, Steve it's, A just a, had cards, didn't he? Well, he just held flashcards up, had No, you? Steve A just used to elbow me in the ribs. I think, uh, uh, well, I think when you've got the, uh, the sheet hand and the, the, the skipper working together and they get in that groove, I mean, you're unstoppable then. Yeah. You've got the boat speed, you're pushing the boat up, you're running away for speed when you need it. Um, and that's really where all the big gains are made. Yeah. Especially in a soldier's course like this where... If you go around and you drop down below somebody else, you, you, and you've got to do one of these cheeky tacks out. The tacks out aren't looking too great at the moment. So no. You, you can hold your height with a bit of speed. You're looking real nice. Look, you're a little, you're a little bit behind, and you're always trying to find something, do something a little bit different, find a little bit more, and pull yourself back into it. In, in, inevitably, it normally works against you, doesn't it? Yeah. Just interesting, not on screen, but Sail Racing has gone for a big bolter out to the right. This could be my cheeky mid-race flyer in the right that comes off. Well, you've, you've said um, it now, so you know what's going to happen, Paulie. <laughs> I, I said there's, there's going to be There's right. on screen with Bartley Construction in the background. So, I mean, you're talking about out to the right now. We've done that one with Ruffy before and just kept going out and lifting more and more and more and you know you're in all sorts of trouble <laughs> when you come back. You go, we're about 500 metres behind now. The, the Capital Brewing on screen, they've done well here. They're just in, but just not quite too strict at the moment, having to bend in a couple of the lulls. That's where all this, you know, keeping the boat rolling through this little bit of slop is very important. What do you think? you think it's dropped off a couple of knots here? Maybe one or two knots? <sighs> Possibly. They're still two swinging though, aren't they, really? So. Oh. It's just a little bit hard because this left-hand corner looks like the way to go, but it's also where it looks like there's the left, left spree, so... Felix De Barrio is, is steering the employment hero. There's young Will is off in the US drifting, doing motor racing. The Typhoon's bolted there to the left of that shot there from the drone. Just to the right of the drone up there, the red pumps again. He just went into a big knock and then he's just come back again. Very short though. It does look like it has stopped a little bit left and faded here though. Yeah, they just look a little softer. There they are, there's a typhoon. 
the first Five moon, just keeping themselves between moon and the next mark. The surprise packet here might be biting the access up into second or third, I think you'll find, boys. Yeah, he's, he's got some boat speed there, doesn't he, might be? Yeah. And could you imagine down the club tonight if they managed to get past all of them no, with, um, with Mono? I don't think that's going to be happening today, Jimmy. No. What, Mono and Jared together? No, no, no. no well, the Mono, games, Mono right? is uh, Chris Thomas's father-in-law. Yeah, he's, a, well, he's a team... Mono puts himself down as a team principal. Does he pay the bills? No. <laughs> <laughs> Mate won't shout a beer. He got second in the footy tipping comp and got at the club and, yeah. We apparently had to, we were five minutes late, five minutes after the club opened to get a free drink out of him. <laughs> so there's the Typhoon. With, I'll just come forward and try and get yeah, the movement the in the background. It is the softened. boys are really crouching now. Yeah. And in, in this yeah. sloppy stuff, this crouching is where it gets really difficult because the boat loads up going up the face of the waves and just gets a little bit harder. Seaway's starting to pick up a little bit, as you can see there, from earlier on. They're moving again now. Yep, and there's, there's the distance. So he's, he's back out to at least, what do you think, at least 100, 150 metres? Yeah. I think when it goes light and fluky, it probably plays a lot, lot into Nathan's hands. He's... Yep. He's very, um, yeah. yeah. He's always had out of the boat. You got to remember that's how he won a gold medal. Was in light and fluky, variable conditions. Interesting enough, if you look at the, the bow of his boat there, and he's, he, the, the bow's a fair way out. Well, he's just yeah. got the boys back out too, shrinking there, hasn't he? Take that little step no. down. And Normally, we well, I probably would have been saying with a little bit more bow now than that. You also did have quite a large sheet hand on your boat for quite a while. It's just sitting a little bit lower. <laughs> It was, certainly wasn't our breeze, wasn't probably this stuff. Hey, this we're, is, this we're, is, we're like a little bit more wind. We'd definitely be three schooners before the race at Wharf Bar before one of these. Yeah. <laughs> Down? Yeah. Yeah, they look quick through the water again. Our breeze has just kicked back in again. You see how Nathan's virtually sitting in front of the sheet hand boat? Well, the sheet, yeah, you just saw the sheet hand just stepping back behind him there, didn't you? Yeah, they're locked in. Nicely there, very tight. Keep your weight together in this lumpy stuff, keep all of them. Don't give all the secrets away, we tell them all that after the Nationals bully. <laughs> <laughs> so racing, they went for the flyer out to the... He looks good, doesn't he? He looking good coming back. Who said that right wouldn't pay, Polly? I said someone will go right once. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As you said, the second time he goes out there on the next lap, we'll yeah. see what happens you there. Yeah, Ruffy, oh, I'll, Ruffy will have a crack out there next month. Actually, it's a clubby. He'll, he'll... As you, there they are there, coming up Death Sail Racing. He looks like he's in second there. Yep, I he's agree done very it. well. He's come from about seventh or eighth. When we talk about boat speed in these kind of conditions, I'd say they're one of the ones that you'd have to watch the most. So Typhoon here just approaching the ley line. We should see attack out of him in the next five, ten seconds. They're playing it quite safe there by the looks of it. We've done quite a lot of work on this rig, I think, since Mal and Nathan have been part of the boat. There was rumours it was always quick. It's just a bloke sailing it. Had to stay just upright. Just on the end of the tiller. <laughs> Had to stay upright, didn't it? Always just take it a little slower this time. Sell the boat. Nice down the down the wave. This is incredible by sail racing, right? Just yeah, he's literally one. very gutsy move. But I guess when they're that deep, they had to do something. Little, maybe the breeze just should lighten off there for that period of time. A little less weight in the boat too. They're probably yeah. moving through the water better. 
Boys would be very happy with that. You're brimming with confidence now. I'll say, let's get Nathan. Yeah. I reckon they'll... Probability? Oh, about five to ten percent. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think their best chance at it is if they... Them and Ruffy have a bit of a split and try and... One of them might be able to make a game. It's, it's, it's going to be a bit hard to go right again, isn't it? After you've just uh, consolidated now, you'd be imagining unless people start going for flyers. Here's Botany, as you said. And the old boy. Ant's doing all right. Did he, did he have a cheeky dig in the right up, that one? I didn't actually he see it. Made... He, he came from over the left. I think, I think when that breeze... Oh. When the breeze tied out there a little bit, I think it just filled in from the right first. I just, I just noticed too that Ant's got his turbo jib on as well. So. He's got the big boy on. Yeah, but did die out. Obviously, that helps you. Just a bit more punch right. through this chop. Yep. Ant's, Ant's not quite uh, swinging what he was when he was a sheet hand. He's always making plenty of effort to, to get the weights down. Yeah, well, he runs along Manly Beach, swims from Manly to... Yeah. You can have that, swimming with Shall the sharks. A bit like your old man, yeah, Lolly Sausage, he, who swims out from Fairlight every day. Yeah, he takes a dog with him, though. Yeah, a yeah. bit of insurance. Charlie, she looks like a black seal, so he says that they'll always go for that first. So what do you think about the red pump? They've just sort of slid back a little bit. So yeah, like, red pump's red, yep. Maybe, okay. maybe that breeze has just, just say, dropped off a bit there and a little bit extra weight and just done the performing on it as a result. I just, I just think it's a classic Eastley where there's just, you know, yeah. you can just be in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's not much you can actually do about it a ten, lot of the time. Ten metres lower than someone yeah. else and you seem to be in a, in a yeah. different yeah. line of breeze. We're just on screen watching the moon and jive there. Very nice, very smooth. They've gone early again on the guys as they did last time. Sort of taking down the centre of that course. It sort of means they jump back into that tide coming out of Middle Harbour first. So you just start to get pushed away from them a little bit earlier. There's fluid. Fluid. Just need a long way back. Let's see if Phil can uh, clean his tack line this time. Wimwood's I reckon, reckon and, and might, if he gets in oh, that no, far ahead no. of Clint, he might run around and he give him a lift out of the water. It just looks looks cool. like the hay's caught the hounds. Here comes trouble. Didn't get square enough for the windward set. Just see him in the left-hand corner of your screen. Botany would be very pleased, I think, in that position at the moment. Yeah, I think they would be too. I mean, they got they got fifth in the last couple of years, I believe. Mal, Mal just came back to me saying that Nathan always wants to sit in front of the crew and leans on your legs. He goes, it's absolute pain. <laughs> so maybe that's why Mal agreed to jump into a 16 with him because there's someone else in between. So, <laughs> Brett, hey, toughen up the shins, brother. <laughs> I, I saw with the forehead head that really like putting a lot of pressure on your front knee for quite a while. <laughs> I reckon you just need to harden up, Bolly. Yeah, oh, that's right. Steve was that one. He just it built you down, wouldn't he? He loves it, doesn't it? I was like, when Rob got back, I was nice to him for a week because it was like. Ah, oh, it's just Rob doesn't swing hard enough, does he? I don't know. <laughs> We're just looking down the course here. They look very, they look low coming in there. What was that, sorry, Sam? Again, Nathan, right down the course, you can't see them on the screen I, at the moment. I actually, I actually think he looks low on that bottom mark, yeah. I could, well, you can't see the front edge of the shoot rolling at the moment, so. I oh, know, he looks good. Well, we're just following down here. The Capital Brewing, with a nice early jive on the guys in front. We'll probably find the guys that are all jiving together down there are going to sort of interfere with each other, and we'd expect them just to slide down over the top. Well, Lockie's definitely got a job back. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> you see the difference there, don't you? How spread out they were compared to Nathan. Better be at 16, not Norris, the next week, Jimmy. 
Yeah, we've got their capital brewing, isn't it? Yep. Well, that's just a combo that's gone through a bit of the wash there. So the view is at home, Typhoon going around the bottom market now, and I reckon they've opened up significantly. I, I think they've extended their yeah. haven't they, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah, that 5% has just dropped down. What do you reckon? Ooh. Is it having yeah. a wink song set soon? Can't, can't build this there, mate. I don't think anyone's getting through it. Well, that Ruffy again, looks like he's just come back into the sail racing a little bit. Ah, uh, possibly. So what have we got to go? We've still got one more up, back down and into the finish, right? Is that, because the start boat's still down here. Pretty sure it's, like, hopefully they'll do a win-win finish for it. It was a W, I remember yeah, that much, right. and I'm sure it was, it was five, so. I think this is a fourth one down. So. So racing, are they gonna split, split marks here, or? They're no? just parked up, coming into that mark, haven't they? Yep. Done. No giant drop. And there's a the distance. Nice move, job. Just to the left of the screen, we got the moon and coming in. Pretty tight with the botany. And there's Shebang right behind him. This is going to be a nice close on here. A little bit too hot there from Ruffy having to do a drop just before the mark. Also puts him in good stead for up the top. Two poly for a conventional set. Ah. It's all the difference it could be between first and second there. What was he thinking about though, Jimmy? You blokes start with him. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll, I'll stick up for Ruffy. <laughs> Ruffy. Ruffy would have thought about it going around the top, Mark. He wouldn't have told you about it though. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot going on in his head. Here comes the red pumps coming in hot just behind. They seem to have extended away from the red pumps red a little bit there, haven't they? Yep, and you see Greg pulls it. Dragging it in, yeah. Pulls it around, makes it easier for the to go down the, the spinnaker yeah. shoe hole. You've got to pull it around. It's the better for that shoot, isn't it, really? Yeah. Well, remember that Nationals, Newley and Bredo, the Greg Sarant one up in, in Brisbane, and it was like, that, that made all the difference, the yeah. spinnaker shoot, and everyone, I think, the following year, there's about four or five leave it on spinnaker the, shoots appeared. Even particularly on the sets, isn't it? You can just yeah. leave, leave your sheet hand out there and, so, and then basically do it all. I've sailed on. I sailed a couple of years on one with the shoot, and it's um, it's a bit bit more dynamics than just the forehand hand just ripping it down because we're going in such a small hole. The, as Jimmy alluded to, the, the sheet hand's actually got to help out a little bit by pulling the sheet to the right direction, or else it just clumps up on the drop. Sheet hands okay. help out a lot all the time, Polly. You know that we, we, oh, we, we carry those while we were the ones with the big shoulders because we're carrying them. Hey, I pulled one rope on my boat. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the employment hero with Felix filling in, doing a mighty fine job. Yeah, they're looking good there, aren't they? Very late drop. Gonna hurt a little bit. And then a, a, some cum cot quat wash coming through just to really assist them. Probably two of our elder statesmen out there today, being Clint Owen and Phil Cook. On the on the tiller, I'd say Kenny's. Kenny's got, Ken, a bonus Kenny's got the award by far. Yeah, Kenny, Kenny would have the award for the the youngest bloke out here. The old Kenny Walk. I don't know if he's still playing hockey, but you know he's a, a fit bucket for his age, mate. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely couldn't do it. 
Here's the Sutec and Bartley. They seem to be almost glued together, don't they? I mean, Josh needs to use those big arms he's been developing at the gym. I still think he's recovering from Bathurst, to tell you the truth. A bit of Bathurst leg. You know something I don't know, Paulie. Oh, I saw some oh, photos. Social media is not very kind when you tell the sponsor one thing and you post others. Just to see. I think the sponsor should be down there giving him a bit of a rig tune at the moment. Too. I, I think the sponsor should have been invited to Bathurst. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 we're in a helicopter. now we're talking to you. Look like they're in a helicopter, so. Yeah. Just a bit deep across the foot there, I think, on the SeaTac too. The foot of the main tail just looks a little bit too draggy down low. Josh is crouching there, that's Bartley now. Yeah, they're dragging the main. Anyway, uh, we'll film a bit about that afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> So, for the viewers at home, don't forget, if you're enjoying what you're watching, don't forget to subscribe. We think that's the only way now you can make comments, so get along and subscribe, like us, do whatever you want. Then checking the Facebook, we haven't got too much from Hubble today, which is a little bit disappointing. Oh, don't poke the bear, <laughs> whatever you do. Well, it's, uh... I thought with Steve-O here, we might get a bit of action from Hubble. He always used to give you a bit of grief around the course, yeah. didn't he? He's always a good rival, Hubble. I think, <laughs> I think, I think Hubble's at swimming lessons. The <laughs> sound of me that... He's always trying to get under your skin, and he was very good at it too. He was exceptionally good at it. Excellent tactician. I'm talking about off the water. Yeah, definitely off the water. Oh, he can sink you off the water. So the red pumps here, following the tried and true course. We we thought somebody might go for another flyer from this top pack in the right, but it looks like everybody's gone back to the left again. I, I think if you start racing, you'd... If you got to second, you'd be like, right, I'm, I'm just staying in the train. Who's the keeper? I think, I think a second's a keeper too, especially if we get uh, Ed back on board. There's, on the there's there's they there. might have a few big drops coming. There's Ruffy there. Back to third at the moment. Oh, be a little unsettled. I think Ed's getting pretty close to him on the typhoon just inside us. Yeah, probably right there, Paul. But they're, they're, back, they're back to shrinking up this work, which is, I mean, Ruffy's wheelhouse. But if you just, as I look out the window, just in comparison, the boats in this left corner have gone really soft. It's, it's, it's certainly got a bit fickle now, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, we've even got. Sail racing on screen, they had two blokes sitting in, or well, one bloke sitting in just there. Yeah. Look at them now, look at them. Yeah, it looks Glued great. to the water. Yeah. It's a bit of a tough one, isn't it? It looks slow coming back on that port hand tag. And just off screen, Ruffy's seen what's happened to Sail Racing and he's taken, opted for the early tack. As, as we're saying it, Sail Racing gets hit by a bit of a bullet just to get the boat moving again. I think they might just sort of sail out of the breeze there a little bit and get under a wind shadow off the hill there. It looks to be compressing down the, the um, north head a little bit. And so you've just got to get to that and then you get the big left hook up towards the top mark. One. And Shebang just crossed in front of Moonan, just off screen. We're still on Sail Racing. Sail Racing's just got two out then too. So very soft over there in the left. Yeah, well, I noticed that um, the Typhoon actually tacked out a little bit earlier this time than they had in the previous. They've still got everybody locked away behind them. So we can't see anyone out to the right. The red pumps were basically, I think, the furthest right. The shebang, they've just been chipping their way through this fleet, haven't they? In the third. You know, it's... You saw... someone, someone obviously didn't have the chat with Brent, never do a bad job good. <laughs> No, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> you know whose speed doll is going to be number one in uh, in Ant's phone for the next week or two? I think he just turns his phone up on Thursdays, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that standard play? Yeah, Ant's pretty good at getting you organised pretty early, though. He's got the calendar out, doesn't he? And he yes. writes everybody's names in it. Yeah, he was trying to convince me for uh, next weekend, but I'm, I'm already booked somewhere else. 
<laughs> Do you want to elaborate, or is it a secret? Uh, uh, I like lunch with my wife. Oh, that sounds a lot You've got to get your priorities right sometimes. I, I never would have said that 20 years ago, even 15 years ago. We've missed plenty of wedding to go sailing. There's one of the uh, Gen 1 ferries in the background. The Gen 2 ones are out of service with the rudder or steering issues. Yeah, it's one of the ones that were built here down at Tasmania. They're certainly compressing here for second place, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. It's going to be tight. It's going to be very tight. Looks like that ride's just sort of held out a little bit again, hasn't it? Yeah. And there's right in the back of Ant. And Shebang. Is he wearing driving gloves? Yes. I think he's oh, the only skipper that wears gloves, isn't he? Well, he's, nah. got, he's got some pretty severe uh, nerve problems or tendon problems in yeah. his hands at the moment. So he's waiting for surgery. So he, he's doing exceptionally well. Yeah, right. But can he not close it up? Or? No, he can't close his hand. So would I... Um, Think a tiller work or? I think it's more so pulling the cano and bang up. Uh, a bit like Chris Thomas. <laughs> yeah, he's, I think he's got to get them cut and rejoined. I, I did. Wow. A, I did that motorbike trip with him, and he couldn't even hold on to the handlebars for about three thousand kilometres. Unbelievable. But who, who came out uh, less injured from that trip, Steve? Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> So but, but I ride a motorbike like a foreign hand too. <laughs> <laughs> There's a typhoon around. Ty they, they, they've they're gone out up here. As, as, we, as, as we see the race for second compressor, it's just the rich is getting richer out in the front, aren't they? Just getting to pick their own course and really stretch out. I'm assuming this is their last run back down. Yeah, Matana's making their way up. As they go past second place. Very considerate there of Nathan Wilman and his team. <sighs> Give him a hello. So what's this? Is there a red boat in the water over there? Is that one of us? No, I think it's, I think it's Middle red. Harbour. It's no, it's Middle Harbour, the, um, the old... Sure, it's not red boats? No, I think it's the old Johnny Oliver boat from Middle Harbour. That's, their, that's okay. their top mark, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you got red pumps out over just to the left of the screen. It's going to be a tight race for second, I think. Yeah, you would think that uh, Ruby's just got a little bit more boat speed downhill if he uh, sails the right course. Yeah. Well, what, what we might do, we might stay on this pack as a whole and follow them for the rest of the race and see if we can pick them to pieces. Boss, what do you think about that, Chits? All right. <laughs> My first ever. Great idea. <laughs> Thanks, Chits. I mean, if you spend enough time on it, sooner or later you're going to get one right, aren't you? Mate, it's taken forever. <laughs> Six plus years in the making, that decision. So what about you, Jimmy? Much nicer being out here watching from the... Comfort of your, your boat rather than being out in the water? Mate, I miss skiffs sailing, but just, Steve, the recovery for me is just way too long. I you know, love Manly Skiff Club. This is an absolute dream come true to be able to come out here and live stream it for them and um, you know, still feel like you're involved. Um, we're the best hindsight sailors in the world on here. <laughs> we never get a call wrong ever. I've got three wrong today, Jim. Yeah, yeah we do. <laughs> Paulie, you, you don't understand. Chits can go back and edit that out so we don't ever hear it. So even if a young boy is who you're uh, We'd helping... We'd be about me... 20th now, wouldn't we, Paulie? Oh, we'd be dead. <laughs> um, <laughs> even if the young boys try and get you out of retirement for one race at the end of the year, old Buffer Day or something like that, Jimmy, do you think you uh, can do it? I can't with my shoulder, Paulie. Like it, I literally I try and grab the any higher than... Uh, yeah, no, I'm not talking about you getting on the sheet, mate. Mate, you don't want to see me steering a skip, <laughs> that's for sure. Maybe, uh, maybe you and I should be steering there, Jimmy. I, I think that's a great idea. There yeah, could well, be a bit of, bit of money on that race, I reckon. <laughs> Jimmy, I'll back you in.
I'll have to, I'll, my bag's getting a little general then to, to give me some pointers. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'll have to get Mal over to get in the front for you. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he would. That'd be a good idea. <laughs> Book that date in, Mal. <laughs> Coming downhill with Moonen and Shebang. So this is third and fourth on the racetrack. So the Shebang's really trying to soak away here and really, you know, get a bit of gauge down on, on Ruffy, which is making him just have to sell a little bit lower than he expects. Ruffy's very conscious of that too, though, isn't he? He's just yeah. been trying to soak away. And now... Just to the right of Screedy Cards off here, but the sail racing has come back, which has triggered Ruffy's jive. He's jiving into quite a nice line of pressure above him. You, you sort would, of soaking down over the top at the moment. You would think Ant's going to go deep here. And oh, I reckon Ant's going to get real hot here and go for gold. Keep away from the other two. It, 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 it just looks like they're just starting to lift up. Their angle into mid It's just a little bit different, isn't it? Significantly, yes. And I mean, the yeah, breeze has gone a lot more left, hasn't it? I think I think it's softened a tiny bit and just gone a little bit further left. Amp was the first <laughs> deepest one. And then coming through for a few of these people about a minute back from here are going to have the ferry cut the course in half. So hopefully they've got the their mighty heads out of the ferry. Boat. <laughs> it's another one of the lovely obstacles the blokes from Belmont love, Steve. Eh? If we yeah. just have a look on screen, the sail racing just got that puff and got to duck back away, which... And there goes Contemporary Pool, still in the race, heading up. Yeah, you'd certainly be looking for some puffs now, wouldn't you? Trying to yeah. work the breeze a little bit. But it's definitely gone softer. Yeah. I feel it's got more left, though, so... Yeah, you know, if you're yeah, racing I'm... down the bottom, who does what? Yeah. There's Botany Access. They've had a little go at leading the race, and then they've done well to hang in there. You know, we they had, a, they had that tough mark round to get the bottom, which we thought we might see an explosion. Yep. Uh, it's uh, stay calm. I think Jared's the cooling influence on that boat sometimes with the brothers, isn't he? Oh, I got a no comment calming, regarding that. Uh, calming influence. <laughs> oh, I was actually shocked by that comment myself. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, very much an animated three, three <laughs> crew. And there's Typhoon way off in the distance there, heading to the bottom turn marks for what we believe is the last time. How long we've been racing for? About, about right. Getting close to. I did see the start boat heading up the top there. We're aiming for 90 minute races here, aren't we, Jimmy? For these one race days. For the long course, I yeah, I think it was 90 minutes. Yeah, so I think we should be coming up to that, you know, a 12 minute work up here. We should be almost bang on that. So you can just see if we're looking through the sail racing here that the moon has just managed to catch a few little puffs to get their bow forward on them. If they can get a nice puff to come back here, I think they're both going to be very, very close to each other make it very interesting at the bottom to see if the one behind will follow through back to that left hand side or there'll be a split which could cause Nathan some headaches. So racing back to back to Wilbon type third. Yeah, that breeze has definitely died. They're just starting to look, look, look a little bit more sticky through their manoeuvres, aren't they? It's just not popping I'll tell you out why, of the Boyle family would be stoked, wouldn't they? The Colin and, and Russell Boyle, like yeah, long, long, long time su supporters, sponsors, sailors of 16-foot skiffs, always under the Typhoon banner. And uh, to see the, the Typhoon still sailing. And Do you think they'll be disappointed they don't have the shirts on? Mate, those shirts were each... They were institutional, weren't they? The uh, yeah. mighty typhoon shirts, but the uh, unfortunately the CA Boyle company is no longer. So oh. I'm sure Ed's got a wardrobe full of shirts. I know Baz still does. Yeah, Baz. Baz <laughs> is. Uh, I think Baz has got one of every colour. So both of these boats here just trying to soak down to this mark. 
I think Sal Racing's got it's no a, hope. Oh, no Ruffy. hope. No. Ruffy's. Ruffy should just eat it up there, shouldn't he? He should. I think. He's got him boxed in there. Like, you can't. Ruffy can't should sail it down to Lay and make him follow him in. Yeah. Sail Racing's in a bit of trouble, aren't they? Sail Racing should try and stop and just take its turn here. I don't even think Ruffy's going to struggle to get there. But he's, he's going to get him on starboard here, Steve. Here he goes. Just came away. Oh, a bit more action. Wow. Wow. Well done by the Sail Racing there. <laughs> Mate. Try not to think about some rules. Oh. There's trouble. And hit the bark on sail racing so they can go oh. around again. Oh. I think there's a few people in the water here. <laughs> mast on mast, just avoided that. Oh. 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 I'm going to save that. Gus has got the clamp on it. Oh, no, Gus, fell, Gus, Gus fell out. Matty Stent is going to love watching that. It's sail racing. Yep. Meanwhile, Shebang went around the other mark Good in the background boys. and bolted. Too much trouble <laughs> there, Ann said. I'm going the other way. I think Brent's going to have to put the handbrake on too. <laughs> so he doesn't use phone that during Monday. <laughs> oh, yeah, or buy a new phone. There's sail racing back into it. Real, oh. real battle between the red pumps here too, isn't it? Yeah. Red Pump Shred's really come back into them, haven't they? How far is Ant going to take that way? Wouldn't you you'd oh, flop and go with them? Very use... shortly. Ant's going for gold. <laughs> so both the Red Pumps here too, following each other around, which I find an interesting choice. Greg might have issued team orders. <laughs> All right, let's get back to this... Uh, Battle for second, it is I think the heating up. The big two winners out of that manoeuvre was um, Botany the, the and little issue. Botany and, Botany and uh, Shebang. 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 Big yeah. gain for them. We're going to see Ruffy, who's the Ford, oh well, yeah. He's going to try and put a squeeze on all of them. He's just going to go into a real high groove here, so he can just try and drop them all down into his line. It'll be interesting to see how Ant comes out of this too once we yeah. get on place towards Flagstaff. You definitely got the right guy on the sheet to do it there with, with Gus. With Gussie Williams. Yeah, Gus, Gus, is good. Gus is pretty vocal on the boat too. You yeah. know, he's, he's, he's always calling for his height and his pace when he wants it. And he, he's sort of very much so like the short term up the course. How do we get to the next Gus? How do we do this? I know the way they work, and then they've got the forehead hand feeding information back to Ruffy about big picture. Oh, yeah. I've sailed with those guys a couple of times over the last couple of years, and I, I don't think I've heard any better communication. Uh, um, he's excellent, actually, Gus. Yeah, he is. Feeding back to Ruffy. When, and especially in this sloppy stuff, it's always the most important, isn't it? You know, when you're in a bit of flat water, you can just lock and load. In this, every little wave can just try to catch waves. Yeah, you can feel it under your feet. All these things which the skipper just doesn't quite get. There's Typhoon, not much pressure there. He's going soft. But in saying that, he's got the got the lead, and everyone else is following him in. The only one who's slightly different is the Sutek and the Red Pumps out the other side. They're right over near Middlehead still, so... It does look like just before on Typhoon, there is another one filling out of the bay. Moon and tacking. Obviously seeing what happened with Typhoon and opted to sail back in the... stay with the pressure as much as they can. He's not He's not on camera, but Nathan and up above him, he's just sailed into a hole. He's probably got the breeze about 100 away. I'll just duck up and try and give you the gauge of from where the typhoon is, back to the uh, second place battle. It's, the, the typhoon is really... They've got, they're just partially swinging one at the moment, the typhoon. Big hole. Moon and, moon and swinging maybe two down the track there. Just. 
just very so high wires down there. They're coming back into it slowly. You see Nathan sitting in the boat trying to promote the guys to get out here on the typhoon out on the wire. And there you go. Nathan will be forever just playing with the, the bang, the canoes, anything else that he can play with. Like he came from the 470s where they've got strings for strings and I think he's. Tweakers on tweakers. Yeah, no, that's 505s. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We used to have tweakers. Showing your age again. Oh, <laughs> well, well before Paulie was around. We used to have hydraulics too. Yeah, they were fun. Yeah, my first 16 had hydraulics, and I think what? every day just one would break, or it would just be the tiniest little. Was nick. that back with Ben? In the no, spirit? it was with uh, Mark Graham and Evan Beebe. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have the uh, the pleasure of sailing with Benny until Benny and Rob. <laughs> well, yeah, I got Rob. That was that was easy when Benny put the hat in the ring and the hat on the uh, the rack, and I was like, "Come on, Robbie, come over here." And this is what we <laughs> promised him. And so the only thing Nathan's got to remember here is he's got to finish between the blue mark this week and the. Did he get it wrong? Uh, yeah, in the the first clubby, he went he went to the the wrong finish line. So did, he, did they get finished? Still? No, they scored a DNF um, for, to, for who? For Typhoon. Really? So Nathan's been reminded several times from several people, mainly me. Um, every time I see him, it's like which, which so, where we got to finish. Um, he's been copying it on his on the uh, Typhoon group chat. But, over the top of that yacht there. Yeah. He's just he's just keeping him right where he wants him though, isn't he? He's sort of protecting the left still a little bit, but letting those guys just extend right as he needs. Off into the distance, you can see that's the red pump there, pump from Flyer. It's actually not looking too bad, is it? No, but it's, it's tough to say. Where's, where's... And, and Shebang is off screen, well off screen, but we don't see it there. They went the furthest right, now they've gone the furthest left. Yep, yeah, they're right out the back of the boat from us. Yeah. Just I think Nathan up. looks fairly confident there. It's just a game of patience really at the moment, isn't it? Just oh, I think he'd be pretty happy. It looks like he's going to sail them all out to the lay and make them follow a bit. Well, that's a good redemption for the Typhoon. They're putting the the uh, commentator's curse on between here and the finish line. <laughs> but, um, you know, after the mishap in the last race of going the wrong side of the finish line, um, yeah, and it was a bit of confusion because, like, what it's drawn like on our on our maps, they go and put a blue mark in and you've got to finish between the blue mark and the finish boat. But there's also the 13 sometimes have a start mark in there as well. Yeah, for but a they, sort of they start still mark. had the, the start mark yeah, from the 16s laid out. They'll just say short staff with boats down everywhere, and the the uh, you know we're down one rescue boat at the moment, a new one on the way, and um, so yeah you know, they just went well we'll just leave it it's it's not required, and then Nathan went no worries we'll keep the spinnaker on and power on through the wrong side of the line. Says there's more pressure out here on the right at the moment, isn't there? Well, I actually thought it was just filling it in the left hard before. I can't turn my neck that far. Which <laughs> is <laughs> <laughs> a typhoon on a nice set of waves, not on screen, we're on the moon in there. It's just Boonin have got the same set of waves, just, just about on them there, and Gussie will get them on there, no worries. Just looks like there's a bit of a, a swell underneath them, isn't there? With a bit of a wave, cross wave coming across the bow. Yeah. Very tricky. If you get it right, you can make some big, big gains. Yeah. If you get it wrong, you sort yeah. of feel like you're not moving for quite a little bit of a period. Back to that relationship between the sheet hand and the, the skipper again, isn't it? Yeah. And the forward hand to move their way forward and back and. Forward hand constantly moving. Yeah, cracking a bit of jib to them, all the 
little things on it. What else do you do up there? Is that <laughs> it? That's about it, really. Right. You can play the board, can't you, Steve? Sometimes. <laughs> Tell them where they've made all their mistakes. Just, just a bit of board, that's right. Bit of board. I used to love playing the board a little bit. Don't tell it too much, though, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you probably want a bit more board down today. Yeah. A bit more swell, just washing out the boats, washing out from underneath there. Sacrifice a little bit of speed for some stability. Yeah. So as we sort of expected here, the boats that were just in front just managed to push these other boats all the way out to the lay. You know, we've, oh, there's still a bit of work on the moon and, and star racing, but the typhoon's done very well. Sort of put everybody where he wants them. It's still Nathan close for that third spot in that pack. How, how did um, Shebang's flyer go? Well, of course, from the first three legs, but. Typhoon on screen, about 50 metres to the finish. May have to do one short tack, but may squeeze their way through to the pin. I think they'll still do a tack here. So Craig, if you're watching, get the beers ready in about 15 minutes. I think I'll be back at the club. No, nah, they're going straight through. Two, one, and they're there. Well done, Typhoon. Should have cleaned head of heels after that first lap, didn't they? A little bit of a what? Not bad for that Otto Henry. Just uh, first, time. first first time in a 16. This is how it's done. See you later. Back off to my... Nathan's really been fighting his form in the 16s the last couple of years, hasn't he? Yeah, it's, but it's great to have him around, and he's around during the week. And you know, he's him and Mal have both put their hands up to help out the juniors and whatever when they're around and available. So you know, it's great to have. You know, Mal was a junior of our club, one flying eleven nationals and yeah, and all that. You know, it's great to see them back in the club now, finally after everything. But here's a the battle for second and third, and I think the way we're sort of seeing it is the way it's going to end up. You tend to agree, wouldn't you? I think Ruffy would be very happy in this situation, given that he rolled back a little bit, didn't he? Let yeah. them throw. I'll tell you what, that red pumps in the background of this shot is red pumps red, and red pumps went on a flyer right out to the left. Well, we call it a flyer, but it was the, it was the one track that we were calling for the first two <laughs> no, <but> legs. <laughs> it's the typical easterly again, isn't oh. it? So there's Moonen, two, one, he's across. Well done, boys. So. so racing. I think he'll be reasonably pleased too, given he was buried there for such a period yeah. of time. He really worked his way back through. I mean, yeah. you'd, you'd have a little bit of disappointment that you got through to second. But I think Bought it's me access. Very fourth. And then the red pumps and the shebang having a go at each other. Yeah, a little battle coming up here. A little here battle red here. I mean, the, this red pumps red with a young skipper on board and a new team. Continue to impress. And, and, and oh. Looks like it. Red pumps has just rolled over the top of the shebang there. Yep, so it'll be red pumps red will be next. And, you know, most importantly, if this is the way it finishes, Red Pumps Red's put a boat between them and Red Pumps. <laughs> <laughs> so the young bike's still got the bragging rights. It's a little bit tight when he went over the top of the shebang just then, though. Well done. Might have to get worked out in the bar afterwards. Oh, and I'll let him off, I'm sure. <laughs> for a few rumps. Well, well done, Brent Dennis, for jumping in. Get a clear. The next boat through the line will be red pumps. And I think the uh, the mood will be pretty sombre on there all of a sudden after uh, 
Yeah, I'd say that's the um, that'll be where the most disappointment is for the day. Yep. Other than. Oh, are they out there sailing, are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sutek fire stopping, they're both out here somewhere. <laughs> I can see We're them. going to have to set up a search and rescue shortly. <laughs> Deploy the nav lights. There's the uh, red pumps, the big boss across the line. Next across the line is going to be Employment Hero. That's a quite a remarkable job by young Felix. He got back through the fleet pretty well. Good job, very well. Employment Hero, another new sponsor, relatively new sponsor to the club. They've got a 13 and a 16 Stevo, so quite a good little very, find there. Very nice for that sort of support, isn't it? Yep. And next across the line will be, more than likely, will uh, actually will be, will be Musto. They started off so well, the Musto. They were right up the front there, and then, as we sort of alluded to, these are some of the trickiest conditions to sail this boat. And I think just time on the water, those guys will be able to sort of stay up towards more the front. Yeah, and yeah, you know, Hugh's no slouch of a, a sailor like in, in his own right. And then, just next across the line after Musto will be fluid. the fluid. Breezy ships again. Hard though. It's almost in the northeast there. Yeah, it's going right round, right round to the left. There's 10th across the line, being fluid. Capital Brewing, just to the left of the screen. And the, these are days that I hate. Capital Brewing used to be the IME. Right. Just to make Robbie's day even better. That's punishing, isn't it? So Capital Brewing is next across the line, followed by IME. Robbie would be nice and quiet about that one. No, he, he'll be fine. He's, he's, I've he's heard a, that he's calmed down. He's mellowed out. Might have been me that was rallying him up. Uh, who, was, who was steering the army today? I believe it is young Dan Lynx. Right. Um, so he's, he's, he's a young, quite a young bloke, isn't he, Jimmy? Yeah, yep. Yeah, like he's um, a little gun in the 29ers and yeah. so forth. And then um, it's great. Are sure it's on Sarah Lee steering? Yeah, Might even be Sarah Lee. No, no, no. That's a guy. <laughs> Let's get in there. Let's have a look. <laughs> I know she said it up at Botany, up at Belmont, I think. How long was it you, Dan? You're in the lookalike competition with Sarah Lee. I'll just put you in it. Yeah, put you in it. Yep. I'll next, just... next to probably finish will be Altus Consulting. Watching the guys that all went out to the right, they're coming straight back again. It's it's very much so. You know, the guys who first went up this work went round the bottom. It was getting that right hand corner, and now looks like the left's paid off. Yeah, it's flicking around significantly. It's a classic easily. Painful. Yeah. I better write Alex a message next week if it's an easily forecast. <laughs> I'm so, hey. He better start looking. It'd be nice for people to do a bit of commentating on you anyway, won't no, it? Well, I'm not sailing a club chance, mate. <laughs> I've asked Ruffy if you can have me out for one of the ones in a 16 knot nor'easter, you know, around February. Do you, know, do you know how much help you need, Paul? A bloke in Israel has told me that that was Daniel Lynx on the IME <laughs> and he's 17 years of age, so there That's you go. I, I thought he was young. So next across the line after the mighty Aldous, will be Bartley Constructions. And it's going to be close between Southerly and I found your Sutek finally, Steve. -o. He's back. He's back. There's Bartley finishing. Bartley through. Yep. Bartley, another one with a 16 and a 13, so very good. It's a new team on the Bartley 16 this year, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. So 
So how many boats do we have in the course today? Lots. 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 I would have had to take my shoes off or borrowed your toes to keep count this day, mate. It's good fleet. So next across the line, Subley, our Commodore. That trick line with Timmy Lees and Polehead. And then the Sutek will be next. And then after that will be Fireball and I don't think past that they'll be bothering the, uh, the officials. So um, what we might do, we might say farewell from here on uh, Sydney Harbour, right between the heads on a beautiful sunny day here in Sydney. We look forward to seeing you all again next time on the 29th. Um, it be great to tune in, tell your mates, tell, you, tell everyone, tune in. We'd love, love to uh, see you about. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, notifications will come your way about when we're next live for certain things. And don't forget to feel free to tune in tomorrow. So our media is covering the 18, so you can watch it on the same channels you're watching here today. And um, yeah, I'd like to thank Paulie. You've done a great job again, brother. Thanks, Jimmy. Love and having you on board. Big S. Thank you so much, brother. It's uh, good to be back on a boat and my legs are fine. So <laughs> these are fine. So it's good to have you on board, mate. Thanks Thank so much for coming and helping out. Thank you, mate. It's been lovely out here. Beautiful sunny day. Good company. Yep. Thanks, boys. And uh, thanks to the crew back here. Yeah. The Chits, Rob. And where's my Superman, Dylan? There he is down the back. The drone, so all the drone shots have come from Dylan down the back, and thank you. So, uh, see you again on the 29th, and go Manly. Go Manly. <laughs>